Now, in part two of the program this week, we want to return to a story from a few weeks ago. The ongoing battle for the skies over the United States. You might remember this one. The big three U.S. airlines accusing the big three Gulf carriers of unfair competition. They say Emirates, Qatar and Etihad would be nowhere without the $42 billion in subsidies they allegedly receive from their governments. The Gulf carriers deny they've been subsidized, but U.S. lawmakers are taking it all very seriously. They're pushing for the government to freeze agreements that allow the Gulf Airlines access to U.S. skies. The research filed with the U.S. Congress also shows U.S. airlines have received $155 billion in subsidies of their own, dating back to 1918. When we first covered the story, we heard from one of the smaller Gulf Airlines, which very much supported its regional rivals. This week, we hear from one of the big players themselves. Qatar Airways CEO Akbar al Bakr was in Washington, D.C., talking to lawmakers there. His airline alone has been accused of receiving $16 billion in state subsidies. Interesting, too, that one of those airlines opposed to the Gulf carriers is his own One World Alliance partner. So that's not going down too well. Akbar al-Bakr sat down for a chat with our Washington correspondent, Shihab Britanzi. There was an interesting statement from an Obama administration official quoted anonymously in the Washington Post. Uh, that official said, nothing is imminent, and then added, the foreign policy and military implications have yet to be discussed. What do you think that official was referring to? I'm not a politician, so I don't want to respond to those uh, political uh, responses. I am the chief executive of an airline, and from the airline point of view, what I have to see is that there is no harm that is uh, uh, the allegation, and at the same time, we are serving the wider people of this great country, United States. We are providing people uh, seamless travel experience. We are providing them high standards of in-flight product. We are giving them uh, a, a, a travel experience that they wouldn't get from anybody else. Right, but it was difficult not to think of the fight between the UAE and Canada over landing rights at Ottawa, which ended up with the Canada losing a lease on an airbase in Dubai. Uh, you know, uh, different countries behave uh, with a different way. In Qatar, we always deal with uh, things with a very, very uh, stable mind, and uh, um, we address issues which are always in the best interest of both the partners. So let's go back to the, the specific allegations. The, the big three in the USA, they hired a team of forensic accountants to go through uh, Qatar Airways' finances, and they found uh, that your airline had received $16 billion of subsidies since 2004. Is that true? No, that is not true. First of all, they are not subsidy, and whatever amount we have received, which is not what they are uh, alleging, uh, are pure uh, equity. They don't understand. You see, it is uh, like a, a lawyer defending a criminal uh, in, in, in the, uh, or, or defending a, a case will always raise the bar to, to uh, get to a certain point. But what he, they, are being, uh, they are alleging against us is incorrect. Whatever we have received is a legitimate equity. But you have received by, billions by, of dollars. Yes, we have received billions of dollars. Uh, the same way uh, most of the European carriers on, on whose behalf they are raising these issues have also received a lot more than us. We'll come back to that in a moment. But, but, but they did produce these forensic accountants' uh, statements, some prepared by Ernst & Young, the auditor, which talk of these loans, these government loans, as being non-interest-bearing and having no specific repayment terms. That, that does sound like a subsidy, doesn't it? Not at all. Uh, the government is the owner of the airline, and they put uh, equity into the airline. Why should they ask for interest on the equity? I mean, this is bizarre. Don't you think so? Let me talk to you about... Uh, these uh, issues that they raised. Actually, what they are referring to are technical issues which a normal auditor asks uh, from, uh, from the company has no relevance to the points that they have raised. What they have done is they have ring-fenced all those allegations in a way to really sound that it was the end of the world. But actually, they are misleading statements. And they know very well that they are misleading but they are just being used to justify their argument. But, but in the current climate, isn't, for example, or would $16 billion in government subsidies it's be market distorting? It's not $16 billion. But it's not $16 billion. Right. This is what they say, right. but it is not $16 billion. So can we see how much you have received? Would that help? Well, we will respond to the uh, U.S. government 
when we give our responses to, to all those uh, unfounded allegations. You're always very vociferous in uh, your denial of subsidies, but are subsidies necessarily a, a bad thing for a national airline, or, or do you think they are market distorting, and that's why you're so vociferous in denying that you're receiving uh, subsidies? Well, I cannot talk about other airlines that require subsidies, but as far as I'm concerned, it is not subsidy. Uh, keep in mind that a lot of their alliance partners, on whose behalf, they are waging these allegations against us, are heavily subsidized by their governments. But because it suits them, they don't want to talk about them. I could give you a lot of uh, names here, but I'm not uh, uh, privy to all these arguments that they so are. Let's develop that thought then. You're suggesting that this isn't really about American airlines at all. They're just simply doing a favor for European airlines? Absolutely. When they mention that there is harm to them, what is the harm? when they don't operate to any of the routes that we operate to where we carry these American passengers. As a matter of fact, it's a two-way street. We are bringing a lot of tourists to the United States. Uh, the, 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 the contribution that Qatar Airways made over the last year alone is very close to 900 million uh, US dollars to the, to the GDP. I mean, these are the things that they are not considering. What they are talking about is on an issue where they don't serve. They don't serve the network where we carry the passengers. So what is the harm? I really don't understand. Other than them fighting a, a, a proxy issue for somebody else. But then when you say that the CEO of American Airlines has been uh, deceived, I think was your word. What, I mean, yes, exactly. He's having the wool pulled over his eyes by European well, airlines? Well, uh, well by, by certain individuals here. I mean, why should he get into this bandwagon? where he does not operate to any destinations that we operate to out of United States. I'm an alliance partner of him. I co-chair with him. I contributed to his revenues. So what is the reason for him to get into this issue? I don't understand. But you must it's have very some thoughts. What, what do you think it might be? Well, I don't. I'm sure that when I have the opportunity to talk to him face to face, he will realize that, uh, that uh, it is an issue that he should have never been part of. I mean, the person in their JV that is really should raise the issue is IAG. And they actually are distancing themselves. They have even withdrawn from AEA because of these allegations. So you can see how serious this matter is, uh, is, is getting. And it is, frankly speaking, just a waste of everybody's time.